So this is enrolling and timetabling uh, in particular uh, for the Health and Behavioural Sciences faculty. Uh, and thank you to our colleagues at the faculty for coming along to be able to answer all those questions that I myself uh, won't be able to answer. Okay, my let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing that we do here at UQ is we do an acknowledgement of country. So the University of Queensland UQ acknowledges the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Okay, so we're going to start off with some key information. So we're going to look at some enrolment dates uh, that you need to be aware of. We need looking at what's the difference between faculty and school, what are some different modes of study, uh, and what is an ECP. So let's get started. So there are important enrolment dates. Uh, hopefully you have already kind of decided or you know what courses that you need to enroll in uh, and maybe have already enrolled in them. So uh, important dates. Uh, next Monday is when timetabling opens and then you've got until the 3rd of July to complete your preferences in my timetable. Okay, so it's really important that uh, you put your in, your preferences in. Uh, the 14th of July is the last date to request a program change on my sign it. So that's when you've got to really know what courses you're doing. Uh, if you're a domestic student, uh, that's also the due date to enrol. Uh, the 17th to the 21st of July is orientation week or O week, as we like to say in Australia. There'll be lots of great events on around campus uh, and presentations online and a whole range of things. So really get involved. Uh, the 21st of July, so the last day of O week is the international students due date to enroll. Uh, the 21st of July is, so the week after O week is when your classes will start. The 4th of August is the last date for additional courses or alteration of enrollment and the due date for the payment of fees and charges. And the 31st of August is census date. So this is the last date to drop courses or cancel enrollment without financial penalty. So really important dates to remember. Okay, so here at UQ, we have what we call faculties and schools. So, and what is the difference? People sometimes get confused about what the difference between the two is. So we have uh, six faculties. So, uh, Business Economics and Law Faculty, Engineering, Architecture and Information Technology Faculty, Health and Behavioural Science Faculty, which you all should be in, uh, Humanities and Social Sciences, Medicine and Science. So these are the overall organisations. So within each faculty, you will then have a number of, of schools. I think the current count is 32, uh, but that might be changing soon. So uh, if we look down the list there, we can see some that uh, we can clearly identify which faculty they're going to be in. Uh, so health and rehabilitation sciences, I'm going to assume that's a HABS faculty one because uh, it's almost the exact same name. Uh, so things like architecture are clearly are in the engineering architecture information technology faculty. Uh, so the faculty is the overall organisation and will manage a range of things, but then you'll be within a school within the faculty. Okay, so we're going to look at some key terminology. Now, some of the language we use here at UQ, you will be already uh, familiar with, but then we also like to have our own terms uh, and it can be, get a little confusing. So uh, terms that you should already be aware of, enrolment and timetabling. So enrolling in your courses, uh, selecting your timetable. Uh, a term that we use differently here at UQ is we use program instead of degree. So if you've been at another institution, you might have heard your degree, but here we would call it your program. Okay. Uh, and then we have your course. So you might also have heard of it in previous places as a unit. Here we use it as a course and you have a whole range of courses that uh, are put together to do to uh, for your program. Okay. Uh, and then we have units, okay? So units are the value of individual courses. So most courses have a value of two units. Uh, and if you're enrolled in four courses, generally most of them will be two units and a standard study load is eight units per semester. Uh, now as HABS faculty, a lot of you might be going on placement uh, and your placement courses might in fact be eight units. So you just do that one uh, course for the semester. Uh, it might be 
four, so you might have a part-time placement. So there's a range of different uh, things, especially in, in this faculty. Uh, and then we have our course coordinator. So each course is designed and planned by a course coordinator. They'll often be the main lecturer for your course, okay? Now, and uh, here's some more terms. So electronic course profile, or as we like to say, ECP. So this is where all the information uh, that's relevant to the course that you're doing is you're going to find. So if you want to know what the assessment pieces are and when they're due, what's going to be happening each week, uh, what are the criteria that you're being assessed on, these kinds of things, uh, it's really important to read your ECPs and so that you've got all the correct information. Okay. Uh, now we've also got compulsory and elective courses. So compulsory courses are the mandatory ones that you will need to do uh, to complete your program. If you do not do your compulsory ones, then you're probably not going to complete your program. And then there is electives, uh, which are the courses that you can choose. Now, some programs here, you've got very little choice. Okay. You just have to do what you, what uh, is planned out for you, but some other uh, programs, you will have some uh flexibility. So uh, you might have a major and a minor. So a minor combines courses in a program focusing on a specific discipline and the minors are similar, but they require fewer courses. Uh, we also have a lecture. So a lecture is a presentation delivered by an academic, quite often the course coordinator, uh, you're where you'll be taught the theory of the course, and then you will uh, most likely have tutorials. Tutorials or tutes, as we like to call them, uh, held in smaller classroom involve more interaction between students and the tutor. Uh, other things that we you might also have is you might have workshops and you might have labs. Uh, so there is a range of different ways that you might uh, get your learning, uh, but these are the two main. Okay, and then you've also got your contact hours. So the number of hours per week of teaching activities for a course. Okay, so it and it we made up of lectures, tutorials, workshops. And that information should be in your uh, core, in your ECP. Okay, so it's important note for international students. So a full-time study load is eight units, which is generally four courses, okay, per, 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 per semester. So international students with a student visa have to complete their program by the end date on their confirmation of enrollment, COE. Okay, if you want to reduce the amount of courses you undertake this semester, we advise you to speak with student services and your faculty. So you can't just decide to do less. You will actually have to need to talk to someone because it can have an impact on your visa. Okay, so don't just reduce without talking to someone. Okay, so the grade structure. So here at UQ, a high distinction is a seven, a distinction is a six, five is a credit and four is a pass. Okay. As long as you get one of those, then you'll pass. If you get a three, it is a fail, but you might have the opportunity to do a supplementary assessment. Uh, if you get a two or a one or any of the other the letters, uh, then that is a fail. Okay. And we do not mark on a curve. Okay. So what you get in your results is what you will get. All right. If you do fail, then you will it, you can look at either taking it again, which you will have to do if it is a compulsory subject. If it's a uh, elective, then you might be able to pick something different. Okay. So course attendance mode. So courses in your program may be available in more than one delivery mode, depending on the program and course requirements. So most of our, of our courses here are in-person. So you're required to engage in in-person learning and assessment at uh, either UQ campus or another location at some point. Uh, so UQ is our main, uh, UQ, uh, St. Lucia is our main campus, but obviously we've got Gatton campus, uh, which has a lot of our ag and vet science. We've also got Hurston, which is uh, a lot of medicine and we've got a range of uh, smaller ones as well for different things. Uh, so an in-person course may incorporate some aspects of online delivery. So uh, there might be, the lectures will should be recorded and they will be available, but you are still expected to be attending class. Okay. So there might also be options for online tutorials and, and you might have some assessments online, uh, but you are still in person mode. Okay. Uh, external courses are delivered entirely online and students must, must participate in online for all learning and assessment. 
Like I said, there is limited options for external, uh, but there is some flexibility in person. So always make sure you check your ECP for information on attendance modes, okay? Always make sure you're checking it to see uh, what your required attendance is and what is marked. Okay, so the ECP that I've mentioned multiple times already. So your electronic course profile became, contains information on courses, including the objectives and aims of the courses, the learning resources required. So if you need textbooks, if you need specific software, if you need to read uh, certain articles, uh, it's also got the course learning and teaching activities. So you can know each week what you're expected to do. It will also have your assessment tasks. So if you haven't already, I would highly recommend looking at your ECPs and uh, getting what assessment tasks you've got, putting them in your personal calendar, uh, reading about what you're going to be doing each week, getting prepared. Okay, so to view, view your ECP for the course you're enrolled in, you can uh, log in via my sign it and it can be accessed via the UQ dashboard. You select the enrollments tile and you click on the blue information icon beside the course code. Okay. Uh, now, some EP, ECPs might not be available, uh, but there should be old ones that you can still kind of get a good idea of what the course uh, is involved and then make sure you double check later when it is up. So another way to access your ECP rather than using my sign it is uh, you can just Google it. I often just Google it. Uh, or you can go on the programs and courses uh, webpage on our on the UQ website. Uh, searching for the course code, okay? Making sure you're selecting the correct semester because they there might be some updates. And if you've got to make sure you've got the correct uh, assessment pieces because you don't want to be doing a uh, essay when in fact you're supposed to be doing a speech. Okay, so what does an ECP look like? So we can see here that uh, this ECP has, it's broken down into a number of different sections. We've got some course information. We've got some aims and objectives. We've got the learning resources there. So we've got some required resources and we've got recommended resources. Uh, so I would be double checking that you have access to those things. Uh, we have the learning activities, assessment and policy and guidelines and learning summary. So here is a breakdown of what's happening each week to week because it's the learning activities and then we've also got some assessments so we've got for this one we've got an exam and we've got a report okay one's 30 percent one's 70 percent so it's really important to, that you check these things so that you are aware of what is expected of you all right there will also be under this the assessment thing there will be also some information about if a supplementary is available uh what the extension policy is uh, what other policies there are. So make sure you are reading all those so that you know uh, what you are uh, expected and if it varies from course to course. Okay, so that's an uh, overview of your ECP. Now let's look about uh, look into how to actually enroll if you haven't already. Okay, so we're going to look at my sign it, uh, enrolling in your courses and where to go for course advice and help. So to enroll first, you've got to log on to my sign it. Uh, so you can either go via just typing it in the address or you can find it on your UQ dashboard. Uh, the UQ dashboard is, is quite easy to find. Just about any UQ website, if you scroll to the bottom, you can see the link under current students, uh, click on it. Uh, the dashboard is a, a really great site to maybe bookmark because it, it can uh, get everything that you need can come off this. So you've got my sign it, uh, we've got uh, your email, uh, your files, you can, if you need to make requests, all these certain things uh, are done in the dashboard. So it's really good to be aware of how to access that. Okay, so we're logged into my sign it. Okay, we can see a range of things there. We can see how much we owe. Uh, we've got some, we've got two tasks uh, and zero actions to do. We've got uh, some requests there. We've got personal details. Now, if you are an international student or you're a domestic student who is moving to come to UQ, please, as soon as you have moved or and you've got an Australian number, update your personal details, okay? So make sure you're they're always up to date. Uh, so you can do that via my sign it. 
we've got enrollments, which is the one that we're going to click on. And we've got financials and graduation. Okay. So down the side, we've got some of the different things that we can do in my sign it. So enrolling in your courses, updating our personal details. Uh, if you need to pay your fees, uh, view your final grades. If you need to request a change of program, uh, and if you need a program summary, if you need to defer your exam, so you're sick during exam block and you uh, can't do your exam, you can defer it. Uh, also, if you needed to do a supplementary, you can also apply via my sign it. Okay, so we're now going to talk about uh, how to enroll in a, in a course. So we're going to click on that enrollments tile. And it couldn't be simpler. So we've clicked on the enrollments tile and we're going to add a course. We're going to search for a course, either if we know the code, put it straight in and search for it, or we can do via subject area. Uh, and then once we've selected it, we're going to click the blue enroll button and we're enrolled. Okay. Now, depending on what program you are doing, you might already have a set list of what courses that you have to enroll in and when. Uh, if you need help with picking courses, then you can talk to an academic advisor uh, at your faculty. So uh, for course and program help, you really need to go to your school or faculty. Uh, student services, so my department, we deal with a broad things of UQ, so uh, broad policies and things like that. We can't tell you which courses you need to do. You need to talk to someone in, either in your school or faculty, okay? So obviously the Faculty of Health and Behavioural Sciences, or HABS as we like to call it, is habs at uq.edu.au. So if you don't have that email already, I would be writing that down. Okay, so we're enrolled and now we need to timetable. Now timetabling uh, will open next week. Uh, so we're going to kind of look at, so we're all prepared, ready on the 19th of June. So the, your preferences will open at 12 noon on the 19th of June. You then have to the 3rd of July to do that. So make sure you are selecting in that section. Uh, and then... It will open again for you and you will be given a timetable and then you can adjust and swap a period. Okay. While it doesn't really matter what time you in the preferences open, you do it. It does matter in the adjustment period that you do it straight away. Okay. So choosing class times. Okay, now that you've enrolled in your courses, you need to select your preferred class times. Your classes will be allocated based on the preferences you select. This step is called class preferencing. To select your preferred class times, you'll need to register your preferred times through my timetable. Uh, once again, off the dashboard. Uh, and it, this is our class allocation system. Okay. So we can see there the my timetable selection, and then it will uh, it will take you through. Okay, so we're going to watch a, uh, a video because it will explain things a lot better than I can. Uh, and then we can uh, answer some questions later. This video will help you preference your classes using My Timetable. Through the My UQ portal, you can access the My Timetable application on the left hand side toolbar. On the left of screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. Any class marked with a red symbol requires your attention. When you are notified with a yellow symbol, your preferences for this class are pending. When you are notified with a green symbol, this class has been allocated and requires no further attention. Select a class to enter your preferences. View all available class times displayed in either list or timetable format by switching between the views on the top right-hand corner. Next to the preference drop-down menu, a percentage will indicate the popularity of the class. To preference a class, you can use a drop-down menu to nominate your preference. Where there are four or more options, you will be required to select a minimum of four preferences. Where there are a large number of options, you can choose a maximum of 10 preferences. Then select Save. Here, you will be successfully notified of your progress. 
Now that we have input our preferences into each class, yellow symbols indicate our preferences are saved and pending allocation. When the class preferencing window has closed, my timetable will be unavailable for a few days. During this time, the system will create your personalised timetable based on your preferences. This video will help you You're on mute, Alexa. Thank you. I should, yeah. Okay, so that's the first step of the process. Uh, if you might have also noticed on that video, there was a button at the top that says planner. There, you can watch a separate video on how to use the planner if you are not sure about uh, where to start with your timetable. Uh, you can find that by looking at the enrollment and class, you can just uh, videos, enrollment and class allocation videos. Okay, so once your system has created your timetable, uh, the class adjustment begins, okay? So just because you put first preference and it is on everything doesn't mean you'll get first preferences. That's the whole point of preferencing, uh, but we, we will try and do the best for each student, okay? So the next period that we're going to talk about is the class adjustment, okay? So during class adjustment, you can uh, review your allocated timetable, uh, swap classes if there's space available, uh, add your name to a wait list to swap and wait. And because it's a wait list, that's why it's important for you to do it as soon as possible uh, once you are allowed uh, and allocate class yourself to classes you missed during class preferencing stage. So you might have just uh, forgot to do one or you might have changed your enrollment. Uh, so then you can now uh, enroll in those ones. But once again, the earlier you do this one, then the better it is, okay? You now have your personalised timetable that can be accessed through the MyUQ portal via the timetable application on the left-hand side toolbar. If your situation changes and your timetable no longer suits, you can make changes during the class adjustment stage. On the left of the screen, you can view the courses in which you are enrolled. If there is a green symbol, your classes have been allocated. After the allocation process is complete and where places are available, you are able to change your allocation by clicking the select button next to your preferred class. If a class is full, you can request a swap by clicking the heart icon. You will then become waitlisted and allocated if a place becomes available. If you change your mind, you can deselect the swap request by clicking the heart icon. If you see a clash, you will not be able to allocate to this class. You now have your... Okay, once again, if you did want to watch those videos again, you can at Enrollment and Class Allocation. If you just uh, look up that up, uh, then you can watch them again. Now, if you are still confused about your timetable uh, or something happens and you just really need support with changing your timetable or if you've got questions, you can uh, contact via this email. So the Health and Behavioural Sciences HABS one is habs.mytimetable at uq.edu.au. So I would highly recommend writing that down just in case uh, and reaching out earlier rather than later because like we've just seen with wait lists and things like that, uh, the earlier you, you uh, address the issues and the better chance you have of getting a good outcome. Okay, uh, we will just have a moment to complete a short survey. Uh, here at UQ, we always like to be improving our, our presentations and the support we give to students. So we really appreciate if you would give us some feedback about uh, what you found useful uh, and how this presentation went.
Okay. So we just have two important reminders. So some more general things uh, that it's really important that you are aware of. So you need to make sure you complete the academic integrity modules. Okay. So these modules are designed to help you understand your obligations and responsibilities as a UQ student. So the academic integrity describes the ethical principles that underpin academia and student life. So being aware of these two due dates uh, that you need to complete it by. So part a is the 31st of August and part B is the 27th of October. So making sure that we uh, do do those academic integrity modules. So to access the modules, uh, you can uh, you need to log in on the edX Edge platform and click enroll now to get started. Okay, the modules are intended to be completed only once. Now, if you are having technical difficulties with accessing those, then you can talk to the library. So the UQ library Ask Us uh, can help you. Okay, so we also have a program English for Academic Communication. So if this is your first time uh, studying in English uh, and you're a bit worried about the, your English level or you would like uh, support with uh, improving your English level, uh, you can look at the Academic English classes for UQ students. Okay, so they're free. They're interactive workshops with opportunities to practice language and receive feedback, uh, help you uh, communicate clearly and effectively in academic contexts. Uh, you can take help you take uh, part of your academic life and really help you achieve your goals while, while you are here. So if this is a concern for you, I highly recommend uh, registering and doing the English for academic communication. Okay, so we now have a uh, time for questions. So we do have some uh, great colleagues here from the HABS faculty who will probably be able to answer any timetabling or enrollment questions much better than I can. Uh, so if you do have questions, please pop them in the chat uh, and we will try and answer them. Uh, I can also answer maybe some broader UQ questions if you did have any. Okay, I'll keep on talking while we wait. Uh, so a big thing that students sometimes get confused about is we like to use the term advisor in a few different ways here. So you might have heard earlier me say that I am an, uh, a student advisor. So I help students with settling in, with welfare, uh, with uh, emergency accommodation, with emergency financial assistance, with disability, a whole range of things like that. Okay. So I uh, know a lot of broad UQ policies uh, and lots of general information. I cannot answer questions about uh, course or programs. Okay. Because those are faculty specific. So if you have questions about your course, your courses that you're supposed to be taking or your program structure, uh, all those kinds of things, then you will need to talk to an academic advisor okay and so uh they are at the school or the faculty uh are my colleagues able to confirm if an academic advisors are at the faculty level uh, faculty or school not sure uh but that first email we talked about it would be the one uh to if you do need support with your course or program okay now, to make it even more confusing, we have a third type of advisor. Oh, thank you. They're at the faculty level. All right. That's always good for me to double check because I did a presentation yesterday and they're at the school level. Uh, so a learning advisor, they are once again in our department, so student services, and a learning advisor will help you uh, improve your assessment skills. They can help you interpret the feedback that you got from course coordinators and interpret it back into uh, your assessment pieces. They can uh, help you plan out your 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 timetable, not, sorry, not your timetable, uh, when your assessments are due and help you break them down so that they're manageable. Uh, they can do a range of things. So that's the learning advisors, okay? So they can help you with your skills uh, needed to study, okay? So in a student advisor like myself is disability and welfare and settling in. A learning advisor is helping you with the skills. 
uh, that you need to complete your assessments and an academic advisor is providing you information on course or programs. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, learning and student advisors, you can, we, you can find us uh, at the student centre or student services. Uh, an academic advisor is, you can find at the faculty. Okay. Okay. My colleagues are just saying that, yes, at the faculty and sometimes they would refer to the school, but I think maybe that first email that we talked about would be the, fir we, the first port of call. Okay, very quiet session today. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, uh, I'll give you another minute. Uh, I might talk about O Week instead. So orientation week is coming up. So it's the 17th to 21st of July. There will be a whole range of uh, events. So the UQU, the University of Queensland Union will have a, a range of events. Uh, we will have a, a bunch of pres presentations online. Uh, some of them you will need to uh, attend if you're an international student. So things like safety in Australia, uh, we've also got accommodation ones because accommodation is quite hard to get here at the moment. Uh, we've got a whole range of things. A welcome to UQ ones that so uh, that you can attend. That you, if you've got any questions about starting at UQ, and also some ones about general life in Australia. Uh, so if it is your kind of first time to Australia and you're a bit worried, we do have a whole bunch of different uh, presentations that you can watch to be prepared. Uh, they're not up yet, but they will be. Uh, and also, if you need one-on-one -on -one support in settling into Australia, uh, then you can book a student advisor appointment. You can just Google UQ Student Advisor and book an appointment. We do phone and Zoom appointments. Uh, we do in-person appointments to help you settle in. Okay. If we don't have any questions... Just before you um, huh? end this, Alexa, I'd just like to add in a few things regarding timetabling that's specific to your HAPS. Yes, I would um, love that. Perfect. So when you go in to start preferencing your timetable and your classes next week, you may notice that some, depending on what program you're in, what courses you've chosen, there may be some of your activities that are coming up as read only. Now, there is a reason behind this. And most of the time, it's because the course coordinators are working hard behind the scenes to allocate you to a certain group depending on different things. So that could be um, due to your placements um, or due to something that happened in first semester and you need to be in certain groups in second semester. Uh, so don't panic if you see it's read only. There are things happening and you will have a class before semester starts. Um, the wait list is a really, really great opportunity for you to jump in and say which one you would prefer to go to. Just know that that is based on other students and whether they're moving their classes around. So it's not always a guarantee that you'll get a spot in your waitlisted class, but it's always great to pop that in just so you have that opportunity to move if a space becomes available. Um, it's not very, you don't have to be in your timetable at 12.01. Um, it is open from 12 for two weeks, I think it is. Um, and your preferencing, the time you enter it has nothing to do with how you are allocated to your courses, your classes. Um, so that's all based on where the chips fall um, and what else you've got going on in your, your workload. Um, so it will allocate to a place, a class that does not have a, a clash with another class. So that's how it'll work. You won't always get your first um, and you won't always get your last. Um, it's meant to be something that's fair across the board. Um, but if you do have any questions or concerns or queries about timetabling or um, 
allocating to classes at all, please don't hesitate to um, shoot an email through to that habs.timetabling at uq.edu timetable um, and myself and the team will be happy to assist. Thank you for that uh, excellent additional information. Uh, now, if there is no other questions or uh, comments, uh, I might wrap it up. So thank you for uh, attending this presentation today. Uh, welcome to UQ. Uh, I'm sure that you will have a great time here uh, and please reach out if you are struggling or if you do need support. We've got plenty of support uh, in place uh, you don't have to do anything alone. Uh, so just welcome. All right. All right. Well, best of luck. Thanks, Alexa. Thank you so much.